Chapter 7, Imminent Threat Frustrated by constant losses, the enemy begins an assault. A single carrot brings nightmares back. During my vision, they caught Senna Duel. Her foe's motives remain unknown. Saturday, 16, 2019. All 600 hours. Griffiths. Griffith Palace. Blastar was traversing the corridors, his mind focused on recent events. Slight boredom was present on the soldier's face, almost a complete opposite of compared to the ones Blackstar knew and spoke through a radio. More than once, the newly formed Pegasus Squadron proved to be a thorn in their side. He was especially concerned about the pink Pegasus that was leading them. As much as he had tried to keep his emotions submerged, all he could do was just walk back and forth. Red Cyclone came to him and saw his anxiety. You're an early bird. Something bothering you? He asked Black Star. Turned around and spoke in a quiet monotone. It made him sound like he hadn't had a rest in days and continually stood on guard. I can't sleep. I've been thinking. Let me guess. Red Cyclone interrupted. You've been thinking about that squadron, but Pegasus I ponies that keeps ruining our plans. The Dark Grove of Dan responded first. But a silence pretty much answered positively to the question. He then looked at his companion. Is it obvious? Well, duh, but I feel your pain. I'm bothered by this as well. We tried every tactic we could think of to lower the pony's morale. But instead, they keep fighting. And they seem to be getting better, too. How is that possible? Red Cyclone was clearly frustrated. He scratched the floor with his left claw. Blackstar tried to point out that they were not dealing with harmless opponents. He knew about psychological parts of the war, not just the battles. It would seem we have underestimated them. They are actually quite resourceful. But that angered the Crimson Griffin even further. He started walking around, barely restraining himself from yelling and waking up every single soldier in the palace. I'm not ready to believe that. I always knew ponies were weak, and now you're telling me my judgment was wrong all this time, he exclaimed, spreading his wings. I would love to see those dragons whimper like little bitches in this story. I really would. Blackstar tried to reason with him, even though he himself was quite anxious about the result of this war. Not only were their actions not as effective as they hoped, the ponies were also surprisingly determined to defend their homeland. You know, this is the kind of thing I hoped would happen in Dragon Quest. It, it, not the whole entire, oh, we're going to pretend to defend ourselves and then run away. But, the dragon, but, you know, instead, the dragons mock the girls when they say they're going to defend Spike. Then, Twilight pushes Spike back and goes, don't worry, Spike, we got this. The dragons laugh. Going, ha ah, what can the ponies do? The camera pans over. We hear sounds of violence and magic being thrown. We turn back and we see the dragons implanted in the trees. And the girls dusting their hooves off as they walk away with Spike. Wouldn't have that made for a better episode, guys? I mean, yeah, we will have lost the teleporting trick and yada yada yada. But. Seeing a bunch of bullies get theirs and beating the living snot out of is so much better. Trust me. I I am merely showing you some cold logic. Whatever trick we play against them, it backfires on us. Instead of forcing them to give up by capturing Phillies, which if you ask me was already a ridiculous idea to begin with. Don't remind me, Red Cyclone shouted. I know that I screwed up, but I'm not going to make the same mistake again. Besides, it's about time just as the game came to an end. Blackstar looked down with precaution. He wasn't certain that his companion meant, so he went deeper. Are you saying exactly? Red I Cyclone's eyes squinted in mad delight. Until now, we've only been testing those ponies by engaging them in single battles. Therefore, I believe we may begin the full frontal operation. So, the actual war will begin today, Blackstar wondered. 
Right. At about four hours, the general, using me as a medium, will issue an order to all squadron leaders to begin to assault. We'll see how long these equines last. The dark graph is seemingly unmoved and was about to leave. Do as you please. I'm not interested in joining the fight. However, I'm certain that the Pegasi, who recently captured our food storage bunkers, will send in a supply team to recover them. So I'm going to meet them. Red Cyclone stared out, trying to get meaning away, he said, You will go all by yourself. You should at least get some... I won't be needing your support, Red Cyclone. You are to coordinate the main assault. Besides, I only want to meet that pink Pegasus. The Crimson Griffith leaned into Black Star as he was trying to tease him. Taking a fancy to her, eh? Don't be a fool. I merely have some unfinished business with her. I'm sure she'll recognize me when we see meet. And I hope she won't disappoint me, like last time. He hanged his voice. What's happened? Can't to tell a companion? Red Cyclone asked. Black Star spread his wings about to fly away. He looked from behind at the Crimson Griffin. Forgive me, but I can't tell you that yet. Let's just say it's personal. Maybe I'll tell you when I come back. Rest assured, this will be an important test for them. With these words, the Dark Griffin flew away and departed into the direction of Equestria, leaving Red Cyclone pondering about the conversation he just had. Sometimes I can't figure them out. Whatever. I just hope he'll give them a cool to show. He thought to himself as he watched the sunrise. <coughs> oh, 830 hours. Equestrian <coughs> airspace. <coughs> en route to Glacier. <coughs> After several days of prep and organizing, the Ross Squadron was finally given the task of opening a path for the supply team to recover the large amounts of stolen food, stored in the bunkers that were recently under the Griffith's control. Firefly turned to communicate on and contacted the others. Alright, let's go over this one more time. As soon as we are going to reach our destination, we'll send the coordinates to Applejack and the ponies for the supply team. Once that's done, our job is to patrol the skies to ensure that not a single griffin is going to hinder their progress. According to Applejack's reports, there are supposedly 10 bunkers. We don't know if all of them are containing stolen supplies or are highly possible. The enemy knows about our plans and will try to stop us. Oh god. It's an escort mission. As he was explaining the details, others were exchanging glances. He had a feeling this would not be an easy task. Escort missions rarely are. So in other words, this miss is probably going to take an entire day. Clockers' voice was heard. It's a good thing we've been keeping up the pace until now. So he sighed a bit at saying this. Things may be looking at our disadvantage for now, but once we recover the food, the table will turn towards us. The pig pegasus asserted. Besides, the training we've been having these past few days did us good. We can handle anything that comes our way. The seven Pegasi were slowly approaching the plains, not far from Glidesdale, unless in green reason on the very ends of the western Equestria, lying close to the border. In a surprise, there was not a single sign of the enemy in the area that belonged to them merely just a few weeks ago. They used this opportunity to fly slower and confer stamina. At approximately 10 5500 hours, Firefly told the others to stop in place, as he was trying to confirm the position. But since he hadn't visited Equestria in the past few years, he felt a little lost. All these planes like you tackled me, Thunder. Can you tell us where we are? Anibal pulled out a map of Equestria, as he was holding her bag and began examining it. The other pig side came closer, so they could hear what she was saying. Hmm. According to their symbols of ancient meaning, I presume, we're somewhere here. The white pig is pointing her left hoof on a map that had a plane similar to the one they were flying above. Medley tried to hold her laugh. It was obviously that lightning was acting goofy to lighten up the mood. Fortunately, Firefly was not amused. Tell me something I don't know, she said with a sarcastic tone. Lightning decided to play along. As her the Pegasus was serious or not. Consuming large amounts of food may lead to indigestion problems. This time, no point could resist. Even Firefly roared with laughter. However true and serious the statement that Lightning Bolt made was. Once he calmed down, she spoke again. Tell me I do something I don't know, but not that. Maybe something irrelevant? Lightning did put the map away and turned her scanner on, trying to find the bunkers. She managed to notice several of them lying almost in a single straight line. Slide bunkers at 11 o'clock! It's 10.5700 hours. We gotta hurry! 
Dippy exclaimed all of a sudden. Beverly Cockaker chuckled again, but Firefly rarely rolled her eyes. All right, we've had some laughs. Now let's get this operation started. Upon hearing this order, the broad squadron started lowering the altitude. Within a few minutes, the ground was visible to them. As Lightning mentioned, the bunkers were there. Firefly immediately sent to coordinates to Applejack so the supply team could begin the recovery process. However, Firefly forgot about a certain detail that Cloudcaker noticed the closer they were getting to the bunkers. Hey, look, everybody. It seems the enemy's already lying away for us. The Purple Pegasus pointed out. They all looked in front of them. It was true. Someone was apparently waiting for them on the ground. Firefly surprised it was a single Griffith. He's alone there. Um, you think it might be a trap? See, uh, uh, see my uh, Rainbow Dash ass flutter side? It's possible. Those guys are capable of being tricks. Well, I'm ready for whatever they're going to hold, holding up their wings. That's the attitude I like, girls. Everybody, descend and land! Following Firefly's lead, the other pig inside soon approached the mysterious Dark Griffith. Was I not aware of the presence, or merely thinking about something? But as soon as he heard the ponies and their hoofs touching the ground, he opened his eyes. A mild smirk graced his face. So you come. 1100 hours. Clydesdale Plains. Initially, neither the Pegasi nor the Griffith took any action. It seemed like stared into their eyes. As if they were trying to read each other's predicaments and thoughts. Knowing that time was not on their side, Firefly decided to persuade him to leave. Being fully confident he would not be able to fight all seven of them. Look, pal, we came here with an important mission, so you would be wise to. Firefly started, but she was cut short when the Griffith rose his claw, interrupting her. I know what, exactly what you're here for, and I've been waiting for the moment to finally meet you. You're quite a bunch of troublemakers. I give you that. None of you are strong enough to defeat me, though. The Pegasine looked at each other, confused from the bold statement. Medley tried to sign. We also you are trying to go and take on someone by yourself. We didn't see you have no idea who you're dealing with. Well, the Marat Squadron, I know. I have a possible degree of knowledge about all of you, especially your leader. Saying this, he pointed at Claude Firefly. Really? Well, I don't know anything about you. So he replied. The Dark Griffith shook his head, dissatisfied. He took a step towards the Pegasi, who were prepared to face him in battle. They knew the supply team would be here any minute, so time was of the essence. The he extended his wings, and he also saw an emblem that looked like a black star on his vest. Rainbow Dash recognized it. That emblem! You want the Griffiths attack the Wonderbolts! You're the one who started this whole mess! Furious, the Blue Pegasus tried to attack him. But the Griffiths soldier easily avoided her attack, and retaliated with a fist's wings mass, sending Rainbow flying back to her surprised friends. The Blue Pegasus hit the ground hard. It's useless, I told you. None of you is a mess for me, except you, Anita. Tell me, Firefly, how many years has it been? Five, six, maybe. The Pegasus didn't say a word, since he was just staring at the emblem, unaware of anything else. The little black star was all that mattered to her now. All those bad memories started coming back to her mercilessly. The sight of her burning home, the charcoal bodies of her parents, and within this infernal scenery, an imitating figure. Looking at her with a piercing sight, she started to tremble. Drippy noticed it and asked Firefly, does he know that Griffith? She turned to turns him and kept staring at the black star. Her voice was clearly shaky with anger. Yes, I know him all too well. Of all the creatures in this world, he earned my hatred. That mouth furiously poured into that last word made Firefly cringe in fear. Others were shocked, too, when they heard that. Rainbow stood up, and when she came closer, she saw Firefly's face, tears streaming down from the cheeks of her eyes. Black Star, all these years I was hoping to see you again. I thought my pain would finally decide that I could rest. Then your thoughts are wrong. Black Star interrupted with a dark monotone. You should know that ghosts from the past are only meant to torment you. Rainbow had no idea what he was referring to or why Firefly was so furious. So he tried to talk to her about it. The pink Pegasus took a deep breath, and her fo voice was seeking from emotions. She sounded determined. You remember when I told you girls I have good reason to hate the Griffins? Well, Blackstar's that reason. Because he... He... 
Firefly couldn't bring herself to say it at first. The lightning fault puts her into saying, She killed my parents. The ponies gasped. But now they slowly started to think how Firefly felt. The person who was responsible for the death of the ones he loved the most was standing right before her. Even worse, he was acting like it was no big deal. He even confirmed it. Yes, it's true. I killed Firefly's parents. It was all part of my mission assignment. I was told to eliminate any possible traits of mutiny. Besides, her father was a very good warrior. He would grow into a threat to us, especially if he brought some other ponies under his banner. But you knew neither my father or mother tried to save the mutiny. They were never part of it. Despite that, you murdered them. Burned them to death. You made me see it! The pink pigasus yelled at Black Star, startling Firefly, Firefly again. Firefly's heartbeat was increasing and her temper kept flaring. The confrontation was imminent. I swore to myself I would fence their deaths by taking you down. So I trained myself for this day to come. You're going to pay for all the evil you've caused. Bold words for a little pony, Black Star mocked her. But before you decide to unleash your punishment at me, you'd be wise to remember that I merely did what I was ordered to do. You of all ponies should know everything about orders and how important they are. You are always being told what to do, but now you have your own team that you give orders to. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. He then reached out to his communicator and said, our guests have arrived. The Griffin then turned his attention to Firefly again. In a short while, your mission will expect a certain setback. He spoke with a spark. Firefly looked behind her, making the other ponies back away when they saw her eyes. They seemed to be burning with anger, despite the tears already dried up in them. Listen up, girls. I'm going to deal with that feather bastard on my own. Do not interfere. Understand? You're to keep the Griffiths away from the supply team. But Firefly, are you sure? Cloud Kicker started trying to talk her outfit, but an intense stare glare from the pink pegasus sealed her lips. Lightning Bolt scared and started to pick up the various enemy signature. There's like 10, no, 15 enemy units incoming. Vector 093, altitude 7000, decreasing. They'll be here soon. What are we going to do? She asked nervously. The points were clearly outnumbered and possibly overpowered, but Rainbow's had no intention of surrendering, so he decided to tackle the challenge. I'll tell you what to do. We must take to the fight to them. Follow me, every pony! She looked to the sky and the others reluctantly followed her. Firefly and Black Star served everything. I trust you won't be getting in our way. The Griffin asked. No worries. They know about orders just as well as I do. Expect no mercy from me. The battle was about to begin. Rainbow and the other Pegasi knew their task. But a father Firefly taking on the murderer of her parents came as a real shocker. Rainbow tried to keep their spirits up, saying that Firefly is capable of handling any opponent. Even though Derpy knew that anger and hatred had a negative impact on the pony and their influence, in this case, her fears were understandable. Soon the Griffiths entered the airspace. Rainbow saw some familiar faces within their ranks. Two squadrons were led by Sacros of Razor. It became clear that Blackstar planned this for some time, as rallying and dismaying Griffiths in one place would normally be a difficult endeavor. The Rainbow Main Pegasus took Medley and Derpy with them, while Lightning was given Fire, fire Shy and Cloud Kicker. And we split into two groups, the ponies flew up to beat their foes. Lightning Bolt and Cloud Kicker fought together with great energy and managed to wound a few Griffith soldiers. But as Lightning attempted to perform another Shining Spark, one of them attacked her from above, hurting her left wing. Cloud Kicker tried to support her, but the other feathered fiends began circling around, making it difficult for the Purple Pegasus to focus on many enemies at the same time. For the next few minutes, Applejack, who was leading the supply team, saw the ponies engaging the Griffins. To their surprise, the Feather Fires seemed to have no intentions of stopping the ponies from recovering the food. It almost seemed like the whole reason Blackstar was waiting for the Mirage Squadron to show up was to trap them here, take them down with overwhelming strength and numbers, to fence off the ponies for the supply team. Applejack shivered at those thoughts, but they seemed to be the reason for this fight. She only prayed that Rainbow and the others somehow made it out alive. She so then started dispatching the ponies to the bunkers so they could start recovering food. Even while the Earth Pony was helping retrieve the supplies, she still looked to the skies, fearing for her friend's safety, cursing herself being able to, unable to help them. I had to trust Rainbow. 
I'm sure she'll be able to make it back. I just know it. Elsa kept telling herself. No side could gain the advantage over the other in the struggle. Despite being outnumbered, the wing gang coins fight with determination, often trying to gang up on one enemy or face several on their own. But the Griffiths were retaliating ever so often, and after exchanging heavy blows with each other in direct confrontation, both Pegasi and Griffiths sustained several bruises. Rainbow broke through the enemy formation to meet Zarkos. With a little assistance for Cloud Kickers, he managed to force him to retreat after a brief dogfight. About eight other Griffiths refused to go back and were ready to fight to the bare end. Razor commented on Ponies' courage, but suddenly we were on Elizabeth's side. Flareside was extremely exhausted. Derby's back was injured, and Lightning was having more and more trouble flying normally due to her left wing being damaged by Razor's attack. The Ponies regrouped near Rainbow. Both sides used this as an opportunity to hold the fight and calculate the casualties. I must admit, you are more dangerous than we thought, Ranger spoke, but we had the advantage in numbers and strength. It's not too late to give up. You really expect us to give up? Keep on your dreaming, Rainbow exclaimed. Medley was a little worried, however. Firefly had herself focused completely on Blackstar, so he did not have no idea what was happening. The Pegasus ponies couldn't count on her to help them in this battle. How could things get any worse? Derpy warned. Just then, Rainbow's communicator started beeping. That's the answer. It was Gale, his voice was completely nervous. Rainbow, listen up. I just got a report from the front lines. Seems the Griffiths are on their way to Main Hen, starting to move in every region. Currently, there are no Pegasus squadrons to protect Main Hen. They're almost still engaged in the north and east borders. We need more units. Do you think your girls could? No, can't do, Rainbow interrupted. We're having our hose full here. Doesn't look good either. But what you say is true. Guess no point is coming to help us, huh? Gale's voice sounded somber. Afraid not. The situation is very dangerous. If the Griffiths take over Main Hen, they'll be a perfect chance to attack Cloudsteel, and then. Don't have to say anything else. I get the message. We'll try to get out of here. Group of Cloudsteel. Seems we'll have to sacrifice Main Hen, though. Dang it! I know, Rainbow, but this is war. Gale reminded her. Losses of war are inevitable. Let's come back alive. We can't win this war without you, Mirage. His last sentence sounded a little desperate. Rainbow turned the communicator off, and seconds later gave Derpy a look that Prima said he just had to jinx us on us. Despite the air in so he tried to think of any possible options. For a moment, she had her sight focused on Firefly fighting Black Star. Both of them were showing signs of fatigue, since the battle lasted for about three hours now, yet neither of them had any intentions of backing away. Firefly's body got scratched several times, leaving a slightly bleeding claw marks here and there, Plus an awful wound on her forehead. But Blackstar was being up too. Right eye having a big bruise from the Pegasus' precise hit. He just hovered in midair, trying to catch breath. Blackstar smirked and started clapping his claws. Bravo. You really did improve. I never expected to have such trouble with you. However, he did charge towards Firefly, trying to smash it to her. The blue maned flyer barely managed to dodge the attack, panting heavily. You still lack skills to defeat me. The Griffith finished the sentence. Firefly's eyes were locked onto his. Her only desire was to bring down the one who destroyed everything. That was peaceful and alive to request her into war. I should have known you would be behind this mess. whole mess. You're one of the ones who lived to fight others. The more you killed, the greatest bliss of your experience. Oh, but you're wrong, my dear. As always, I only helped in orchestrating this conflict, said Black Star. You should actually thank my companion, Red Cyclone. It was mostly his desire to see Equestria engulfed in the fires of war. I merely helped him make his wish coming true. You're full of it. Firefly was clearly disgusted. I'm going to shut that beak of yours once and for all. So he didn't try to fly out, smash him with her hind legs. But the Griffith quickly hit Fagin, knocked Firefly back a bit, then said, I suggest you take a look around. Your rage towards me might have blinded you to your other instincts. Firefly looked behind and noticed that Griffiths were keeping Rainbow and the others on the ropes. Fluttershy and Cloud Kicker could barely keep up with the action. Medley was very exhausted. Derpy and Lightning Bolt sustained an injury. Rainbow couldn't move as swiftly. Things were looking very bleak for the Mirage Squadron. While Blackstar did not see Firefly's face, was obvious he was worried about her friends. But there was no turning back. A spark light in his face up. His goal was achieved. Yet this war rose a curtain on a new factor, not one that neither side expected. Blackstar was about to attack Firefly again, when suddenly something zoomed right before their eyes. 
Surprised, he tried to see who could be this fast, but couldn't see anyone. As the Griffiths were surrounding the Pegasus ponies, one of them got hit hard and fell down to the ground. The assailants were caught off guard. Rainbow uses his opening to break free and attack another Griffith. Razor had no idea what was happening until he noticed new Pegasus entered the airspace. Everyone stopped dead right where they were, seeing the mysterious winged stallion appearing before them. With the sun shining down a silhouette, one of the Griffiths tried to attack him, but the Pegasus flew directly out and smashed him in his face, sending the feathered soldier tumbling down. Neither of the sides knew the identity of this Pegasus. The Black Star noticed his key mark. Echo saw it too. A cold silver ran down his spine. He knew it well. A blue and black ribbon. Everyone could get a bare glimpse of the unknown fire now. His cut was dark blue, almost blending him into the darkened sky. When a gust of wind blew, his silver mane scattered on it. The mysterious Pegasus looked on both Griffiths and ponies, as so if analyzing what side he should aid. Another Griffith got impatient and flew towards him. But the Pegasus reacted immediately by flying overhead and getting behind his attacker. Before he could react, a swift kick at the back sent it downward. Razor shouted to the others, Stay in your positions! And slowly approached the mysterious stallion and said, Identify yourself. The Pegasus did not respond, but kept staring his silver eyes at the Razors. The Griffin felt intimidated. He thought they were about equal in size, and retreated to other soldiers a few seconds later, unable to comprehend why he felt such dread. The ponies had no idea what was going on either, but felt somewhat more confident when they looked down at the stranger. Wow, did he just take out three Griffiths by himself? Clockkicker asked in awe. But he did with a single attack. Whoever he is, he's got some skills. Fire about that said, staring at the science killing mark. I wonder what that ribbon means. Who could he be? Maybe Firefly would know something. No one knew what to do. The Pegasus' sole presence seemed to have put a stop to the fighting. Even the ponies on the ground halted the recovery of supplies when they noticed the new player in the field. Seconds later, Langlis, Echo's voice broke the silence. I order all pe Griffiths to return to Griffiths. At this rate, you'll be wiped out. The feather soldiers were trying to go against the order. And he believed that by ganging up the Pegasus, they could take him down easily. But Razor wasn't sure. The fact he got intimidated just by looking into his eyes for a few seconds didn't help. I did agree with Echo. We are not prepared to face this kind of opponent. We must retreat. Anyone who disobeys will join three who fell down. The force Griffiths to use cold logic. The Pegasus was different than the Mirage Squadron. Stronger and faster, it could easily fight multiple enemies at once. They had to follow orders to lead the airspace. The Laxar was about to leave. Firefly tried to stop him. Running away, coward! Come with our tactical retreat. Blackstar remarked, visibly disappointed. Perhaps you should worry about that stallion over there. He's a living demon. Firefly had no idea what the Black Star meant. He flew away with the others, leaving the battered Pegasus behind. The battle was over. With the timely arrival of the mysterious Pegasus, the Griffiths fled the airspace. But the Pegasus didn't know they could trust the stranger. Firefly was showing their wing rays, tugging under condition. The pink Pegasus' forehead was bleeding a little. Lightning Bolt had a damaged wing, and Derby's back was badly scratched, but their injuries could be tended to easily, and were not life-threatening. Fluttershy and Medley could barely fly, so Rainbow and Derpy had to help him keep balance. Firefly didn't approach the unknown stallion. Hey, thanks for saving our flanks. Could you tell us her name? She asked. To the disappointment, the Pegasus did not answer, and flew away before they could say another word. He disappeared almost as quick as he showed up, leaving them dumbfounded. They had ascended to the ground, where the Pauline's supply team were sending words of congratulations and gratitude for protecting them. Abletech approached Rainbow Das. Well, that was a little taste fun there, partner. You all right? Yeah, old oh, man, Rainbow replied. I just wonder who it could be. I don't remember seeing a Pegasus like him in Equestria. Firefly, do you? She so tried to ask about a stranger. Pink Pegasus was too busy speaking to the communicator to, with Gail. Others came closer, but sounded at the same frequency to hear everything. Stop shaking, Gail. We've taken a few hits, but we're fine and alive, Firefly assured him. She so was pressing the bandages on her forehead, stopping the bleeding. Oh, what a relief. So the re supplies were covered then? Uh-huh. They just finished loading a few supply wa wagons up. Rainbow Dast then joined in. I don't know how you girls are doing this. You all because one of the best soldiers in the Griffith Kingdom could display. That's an acceptable feat. Gail couldn't hold his excitement. Actually, Fireside tried to speak coherently. It wasn't entirely our success. We, um, it would have been harder for us if a new Pegasus didn't show up to help us. 
He defeated the Greek Griffiths completely alone. It was just a single hit. That was so awesome. Rainbow sounded a little roused, as he remembered what Gail told her about lack of reinforcements. But I thought you said we couldn't count on any pony's help. Hearing about the new Pegasus, Gail tried to learn something about him. He asked the Pegasus for, Pegasus for any specific traits he had. Mentally bent in his silver eyes and mane, Cloudkicker spoke of his exceptional speed, while Derby brought out his dark blue coat color. But even this day, Gail was unable to find any Pegasus to combat the description. When asked about his cutie mark, though, Firefly told him about the blue and black ribbon he bared when he spread his wings. This, struck, this detail struck Gale deeply. You say his cutie mark was a ribbon? Yeah, so what about it? For a few seconds, the Pegasus couldn't understand Gale. It was sounding like he was mumbling to himself. And mentally, Lightning Rainbow only caught a few words such as Phantom, Reaper, or Legend. The last word prompted Rainbow Dance to ask the question further. So, do you know who he is or where he's from? Can we trust him? She kept asking. Gail finally calmed down and said, Those traits are correct. They were a luck, girls. The Pegasus was a living legend. That Pegasus is Mobius, the Ribbon Fighter. No point ever heard that name before, so they wanted to know something more. Having found out his flight record, Gale stated that Mobius had never been shut down during business he took, and have rose from the position of rookie to top ace in less than 12 months. Oh, by the way, guys, apparently this is actually a character from the games. His number of victories is the highest ever achieved by a single Pegasus. In the past, he was a keen factor in helping a certain nation overcome an invasion, mount a comeback, where he single hopefully managed to defeat all the members of the supposedly invincible squadron, including classing with and finishing off their leader. Plain eyes widening their respect. Since the Pegasus would fly for Equestria, they would be one step closer to saving their homeland. But Mobius' place of birth and origin were unknown. He apparently wasn't from Equestria, but a completely different land. Gale also added that Manhattan was unfortunately overrun by Griffiths, and now Marauder Squadron was being called back to Klaus to recover and help defend the city for the impending attack. Pegasus had parted ways with Applejack and the supply team as they head back in their directions. Rainbow's mind was on Mobius the whole way. 19, 300 hours. Griffiths. Griffin Palace. Blackstar returned, seeing several criminals beaten up by the ponies, and knowing he lost street soldiers because of Moby's appearance. Echo told him a few details about him, but didn't mention where he got the information. Red Cyclone was waiting for him in the shadows. Say, the funny book took you long enough. So, did your plan work? Yes, but only partially. Blackstar answered, I'm with someone else besides Firefly. Pegasus I taught never to see even my greatest nightmares. What the hell are you babbling about? He then told Red Cyclone about Mobius and how he wrecked havoc into Griffin ranks. Naturally, he shrugged it off, saying it would be impossible for a pony to inflict such terror upon the proud soldiers of the Griffin Kingdom. He simply had luck on his side this time. If he shows up again, he'll tear him apart. Blackstar left that statement without comment. I returned talking about Firefly. She improved greatly. Now that the war had finally begun, we're likely to run each other again. I yelled outside and so to both relief and exhaustion. He spoke to Red Cyclone again. I'm going to rewrite the report today about today's conversation. You coming? Oh, plus, you know how I hate paperwork. Red Cyclone replied. Although, when Black Star left the corridor, he started thinking about this mysterious Pegasus. Sooner or later, he would become a great threat to him.